Hey guys, Mike here with the Medic Materials Facebook page and welcome to Two Minute Tuesdays, now renamed something in about five minutes. I know I talk a lot, I just couldn't give you the information within two minutes. I didn't want to lie to you, so Gerard came up with an awesome name, something in about five minutes. So still every Tuesday, 9 a.m., uh, we're going to be learning off-the-cuff stuff. Today, we are going to be learning all about Cushing's Triad, so here we go. Okay, so let's talk Cushing's triad here. So this is a grouping of symptoms caused by increases in intracranial pressure. How are we going to demonstrate that today? We're going to say that this person has a bleed of some sort within their brain, right? A, uh, a vessel within the brain has, has popped, whether this be uh, because of an aneurysm, because of a, you know, a, a stroke uh, type symptom or, you know, or stroke-like cause or even trauma, something has happened to where there is br uh, blood now leaking into the, uh, the brain cavity within the skull. Problem being is that the skull doesn't have anywhere to put this blood. So the blood collects between the skull and the brain. The skull, because it's such a rigid, you know, rigid hard case, doesn't uh, expand allowing for this fluid uh, increase so what ultimately happens demonstrated by these blue arrows here is the force of the fluid pushes down on the brain or wherever this bleed may be it might be on the side and it starts pushing it towards the other direction um, I have it here on the top so all of this is going to be pushed down Problem being is that, again, the skull doesn't have anywhere for this to go unless it goes through one hole. The foramen magnum down here at the base of the skull is a big round hole at the bottom of the skull where your uh, brain stem connects to your spinal cord. Ultimately, what will happen if this pressure increases so far is that the, the brain will literally be squished through the foramen magnum. This is, a, this is a condition called herniation. You're herniating the brain through this hole. When you start to see herniation, you will start to see the symptoms of Cushing's triad. All right, so the first symptom that you're going to see is a systolic hypertension, right? You're going to see blood pressures through the roof, right? And this is not only because of the increase in intracranial pressure, um, but you're going, the, the brain still needs to become perfused. So what ultimately has to happen is a raise in blood pressure to be able to overcome the pressure in the brain caused by the bleed to still perfuse the, uh, the rest of the brain. So first you'll start to see that systolic hypertension. The second thing that you're gonna see is bradycardia, okay? Typically, the, uh, the uh, medulla and the pons and the midbrain in your uh, brainstem control things such as heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure, things like that. But right now, remember, we're herniating. We are squeezing. All of this pressure is compacting and it is literally compressing your brainstem through a, through a hole about this big. So now you're having all these sorts of weird symptoms, okay? Bradycardia is one of these symptoms that happens when the, uh, the brainstem becomes squashed under this pressure. So the last thing that you guys will be able to see in this Cushing's Triad is irregular respirations, okay? And more specifically, you may see chain stokes, okay? And chain stokes is a very irregular pattern. It goes very fast and deep, and then it slows down to almost apneic and shallow. Uh, and then it'll go back up to fast and deep and back down to almost apneic and shallow. Uh, there's a great video here on the, uh, the Facebook group uh, that I show you a real patient with chain stokes so you guys can kind of see that. So if you're not a member of the group, go over there now and join. Um, but these are the things that will happen when that, that brain stem gets compacted uh, under the increased intracranial pressure. So these systolic hypertension, bradycardia, and irregular respirations, typically seen as chain stokes, um, makes up Cushing's triad.
Well, guys, I hope that helped you guys understand intracranial pressure, herniation, and the symptoms associated with Cushing's triad. I will see you guys in the next video.